Hey guys, welcome back to Will It Break. Um, <laughs> it's been a while since I've filmed or done anything. Um, good news, the air conditioner, two weeks, she's still running, still blowing cold. Uh, we are gonna make an honest attempt at getting back on this bus. Honestly, I haven't worked on it because pretty much everything I've been touching lately has not been cooperating. But we got to get going. Um, I've got a lot of other stuff in the hopper, and uh, we, we got to make some progress. So we're going to work back on the shower. Uh, I got to show you something. So here's what's been stopped progress on the bus is I've got a shower valve, residential, you know. I did uh, trim it already. But this is a two by three inch wall. And. <laughs> That valve, she's just a little too big for this wall. Especially going with the thinner uh, paneling I was gonna use. So I'm gonna have to, well, I've been trying to figure out how am I gonna put a, you know, a three inch shower fixture into a, you know, two and a half inch wall. Honestly, that's, I, I've just been trying to YouTube and, and figure out what my options are. Other problem I'm running into is right here is a big air tank, so I can't run the water line straight down. So now I've got to go down and over to the side, and there's there is a stupid amount of control wires and pipes and air lines pretty much all through where this wall is. We're gonna need a lot of luck, and like I say, the way mine's been lately. I have been very hesitant to work on the bus because uh, this can get expensive. So I had the epiphany. I've got a GoPro. I've got a stick to put it on. So I used it to see under the bus because again, I can't get underneath it yet. And I estimated where the hole can go. And as you can see, it was close to that frame, but it's right in the middle. So I think I'm gonna be all right. And I think I'm gonna chance it run my water lines too. So, the first step we're doing is cutting this drain pipe. Uh, this is a weird contraption to me. Um, I've not seen this kind. It's got a rubber, rubber gasket, so we're just doing our best to figure it out. We got this precise measurement going. That should stick down far enough, hopefully. We are just gonna uh, install this dude on the shower pan and using this plumber's cock. I guess you can use, you know, pipe dope or a uh, plumber's putty. But I just decided to go with this. Well, and I'll tell you, you need to keep one of these razor knives on you at all times. I can't count how many times a day I have to use this thing. So I'm sure somebody's going to light me on fire from the internet because the smart thing to do would be to set the tower base, then set the pipe in and screw it on from the bottom. But remember, I cannot get under the bus. I mean, I could, but it would take a half a day to get that all set up. I'm just trying to keep progress moving forward at this point. Because one thing I've learned, you can stare at a task and run it a hundred different ways and it doesn't matter what way you pick there's going to be some challenge that you didn't think of it was unforeseen so to me you just got to you got to get it done just get moving so we are using the custom float bedding mortar here uh, i can tell you <laughs> you build a bus you better put a residential shower in it those rv showers junk total junk i uh i put a new one in my other rv because the uh the tub cracked and it lasted about a year before it too cracked so yeah i definitely wouldn't skimp on your shower oh yeah breathe it in and i don't know if i need to go heavy on the sides to help support it i wouldn't think so but i've got a pretty 
pretty hefty glass enclosure going around this. I know, glass in a bus. But we're doing it. Yep, let's go see what this does. I'm gonna test fit this. <laughs> this is why we test fit. Yeah. That would be problematic. Fixed. Barely. I see we got a two by four to replace. You know, that quality lever you get, that thing snapped the screw because it twisted. So we'll have to replace that here. At least unscrew that one. So you might not be able to notice, but it is butting up against all of the wall studs. This is going to be relevant later. Now, back to what we was doing. Alright, now, so I marked this about how deep I need to be. That's pretty close. Yep, that'll do. Hold on to your butts. And right about now is what I'm noticing. I'm about a half an inch off of the wall there. You can see the whole thing wiggling from left to right. And that's not the wall or the bus shaking. That's the camera on the tripod. It's just a pole with a little tripod leg at the bottom. Now I'm getting desperate on how to get this thing to shift over to my left hand side and nothing's working. So I've just resolved the fact that I'm going to have to solve this problem down the road. I cannot get that shower base to scooch to the left. So now we're just checking for level. Front's a little high. Take that. Alright, so of course I bought some fancy countersink bits and can't find them. So we're using the poor man's countersink bit and it's actually working very nice. It's just a step up bit from Hobo Freight. But I gotta sink this one a wee bit more and put a shim in it. Yep, yeah, that works real nice. You can see that. Hopefully. Nice and flush. So, yep, if you go and buy a bunch of countersink bits and can't find them, there's your answer. Well, woo wee, guys, it's been a minute. Uh, nothing will put your life on hold like uh, buying property. So, yeah, it's been probably a good month and a half since I've worked on the bus. Yeah, we're trying to escape the, uh, the People's Republic of California stand. <laughs> Not anytime soon, but we did uh, we did get some property in Texas, so that process put this bus build on complete hold. I, I couldn't do nothing because you you know they don't want you to spend no money. They don't want you to do nothing. Have a couple of 
things we have to get past here. So when I set this shower tub, I dry fitted this thing three times. But when I finally put the cement in, you can see I've got a bigger gap there than I do on this side. This one's flush. That one, no matter what I did, I could not get this shower drain to slide over. So we did the uh, practical thing and bought two different sizes of hardy board. I got some thicker stuff to help get rid of that, uh, that gap. I hope it's gonna work. I don't know, but that's what we're doing. So that's today's uh, goal is to get the, uh, the shower framed out, but I gotta run electrical before I cover these walls up. So, and we're gonna be all over the map today, bottom line. August 12th, we're back on the bus. Making some headway. Um, good thing is with this hardy board, you put some grout sealing in it, so you'll fill in these gaps real nice. Uh, really fighting with uh, dimensional lumber. If I could do anything over again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even buy these two by threes. I would just, I would just get some plywood and uh, cut it into strips and glue it screw it together something but this uh this thing is really out of square and i took time to uh square it up knowing everything in the bus isn't square but yeah i'm really fighting it i'm about a i'm about a quarter inch out on this wall but we're gonna make it work so we're just gonna keep plugging along get that one buttoned up and get some uh, get some mortar going. On each window support, there's this tab that sticks out about an inch and a half. And I've left them because they would be great to anchor stuff to, but this one's kind of in the way. So we're just gonna blast it off with the slicing dice. Tuesday the 13th I think I don't remember it don't matter so progress has been slow I keep running into little issues so right now this is what I said I hate about dimensional lumber it looks like this one's crooked but it's this one and I don't know if that's going to show up on the camera but that thing is bowing out you can see what it's doing to the the hardy board right here so we got to take that thing out and that's why i said i in hindsight i should have just made my own lumber out of plywood it's much less susceptible to uh warping like that the biggest issue i'm been struggling with is the shower um because I use two by three instead of two by four. And this this is a Mullen faucet. And I bought, well, these can't, no, these didn't come with it. I had to buy another kit to adapt it to PEX pipe. But as you can see, that thing is, in fact, it, I might be just past it. I may have to move that. Uh, trying to get this thing to install in such a narrow wall because it, they give you 
Oh, let's see if I can find it. This, uh, this flush ring here. And this thing is supposed to do is, you're supposed to cut the hole bigger, and this thing sits kind of flush. But I don't have the, I don't have enough thickness to do that. And I don't want to put a two by four wall in here. I wasn't kidding, and neither was anybody else. Um, even an inch or two can totally detonate your entire bus build. Uh, I, I, I've been witnessing it firsthand, uh, and I didn't doubt those that, that said it before me. Um, I've already had to push an inch into the bedroom. And that doesn't seem like much, but when you're talking a walkway that's that wide, and now you take another two or three inches off of that, uh, you know, that's the difference from walking just comfortably through from having to turn sideways. So, anyhow, that's what we're, uh, we're going to get this wall finished up. The other thing is because this bus is curved, you know, this was, <laughs> I had originally planned on buying the MCI because it has straight walls. But Prevos, this has curved walls. So you got to build some funky things. Uh, when you start coming up to the wall and this stainless steel I love it because it doesn't rust but what a nightmare for drilling Well, here we go again. It's Wednesday evening. Been tinkering most of the day. Just trying to get this wall <laughs> ready to go. I was all excited because I was thinking it's time for the tiles and what we're using. It's a vinyl tile, but they're rather large. It's kind of simulated marble. Don't mind the dirt there. That's from the display window. But these are vinyl and they interlock and they're for showers. So I don't have to be so precise on this uh, wall mud. One thing I will say for this hardy backer, I learned the hard way. Uh, you put it in like you're pouring concrete on the ground. You use a trial. I was trying to use a putty knife like it was uh, drywall and I was fighting me and fighting me. I could not get it to stay level. and It was just doing all kinds of goofiness. And with all things with a bus build, once you're in about the last three quarters of it, you figure it out. So at any rate, this is fine for what we're doing. Uh, I'm not painting it. If I was, I would have to make it a lot smoother than this. And I did find using a, a flap attack, one of those flapper discs there. We'll sand that grout down. You don't let it get too dry. It's gotta be dry, but not dry, dry. Um, so I was able to sand some of my uh, imperfections out. Uh, so 
So that's where that's at. I did fill in some of the back, just, I don't know why. I guess because I had the stuff left over. Um, started to drill my holes for the water. I just rolled the dice, honestly. I, I, I can't get under this bus because the air suspension needs new airbags. Uh, so it's too low and I don't have it propped up. So I couldn't really get under the bus to see what I was going to punch through. So I just sent it and luckily I didn't hit nothing. So we have the water lines ready to go, but I wanted to get the tiles going because I think that's going to go quick. And then I remembered my shower is going to be very tight. Um, this is the, this is the bracket for the glass enclosure. And if I set that on there, you can see I don't got much room for my ceiling. I was going to add another furring strip this way and use paneling in here, but it's going to be tight. So I'm going to have to just put a panel up on this and hope it's enough. But with that said, now I have to get the ceiling in first. So in order to do the ceiling, I got to install the fan. <laughs> so I went from doing tile to installing a, a roof vent. So that's where we're at. I don't know if I'm going to... It's been a long time since I sent a video out, I know. So I think I'm going to break this up into two parts. And I hate to have cliffhangers like that. I really wanted to have a finished product here. Because I think this is going to look just badass. I really do. Uh, way better than any ordinary RV shower. I can already tell that thing, I could do jumping jacks on that thing, it ain't moving. Anybody with an RV knows, you step in an RV tub, it feels like you're going to fall through the bottom of the floor. And they're just cheap. This was, the, this was one of the main reasons I want to build my own. For the, for the bathroom and a solid shower. So, anyhow, uh, we're going to get to getting. So I wanted to elaborate. This was the, it's a smaller trial. It's not really big. But this, this was the game changer. Because like I said, I did these seams using it the right way. And they came out so much better than this god awful mess right here. Uh, but the trick is to just get a glob on the back and then just spread it just like that. And put some pressure down. It pushes it through the seams. It just, uh, it's just the way to go. So, uh, yeah, definitely. Don't use a putty knife. Man, I'm telling you, if you don't have a set of these work pro jacks, you're doing it wrong. Especially if you're trying to do this by yourself. I have used these things for all kinds of stuff. And yeah, they're not cheap. I want to say they're 60 or 70 bucks. I know I've mentioned them in an earlier video, but totally worth it. And for the record, it never gets easier to cut a hole in your perfectly good roof. There's always a pucker factor that something's going to go wrong. So we decided we're gonna paint those windows that are all jacked up because they're getting covered anyways. So we're just rolling on some black satin paint, mostly to help hide the construction uh, if you're standing on the outside of the bus.
All right, guys. <laughs> it's not difficult, but it's a lot slower than I thought. You know, I had to, as I said, I realized I had to put the ceiling in so I could gauge the height for my shower stall, and which means, oh, I got to wire the fan, I got to wire the light. So it's, we're getting there. I got my wire. It's just all low voltage LED stuff, but, you know. Jennifer was in here filling the holes. I'll come hit it with some sandpaper. Um, like I say, I decided to go with this quarter inch. I guess it's quarter, maybe it's a little more. Paneling, because uh, space is a factor. And nothing really, oh, um, one thing I would highly recommend I can find them. Are these little uh, little countersink uh, drill bits? These are just some Ryobi's. But I thought I could just screw these screws in real tight, but this stuff will not compress. So I had to uh, had to drill some countersink holes. And then uh, these are going to be covered by a wall, so I wasn't too worried about them. But those I'll sand, and we'll be good to go. As this is where I'm going to cut this video off. It uh, wasn't my plan. I don't. I kind of wanted to just show this whole thing from start to finish, but I'm running out of daylight on some other projects that I have to get finished, and now well, this is where we're at. So, as you saw, I got the ceiling mostly in, got some wiring in, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna do the tile next and get that shower closure installed. That's really gonna change how this uh, this thing looks. Uh, I'm not going to get over zealous and do the floor just yet, although that would be awesome, but we still got to figure out where this back wall is because where I originally intended to go was basically along that line, but things have kind of moved around a little bit, so anyhow, uh, I'm going to do my best to get this other half out here within a reasonable time. should be next week. Uh, it's not going to be another six weeks, so anyhow, thanks for watching. <laughs>